I've not seen for some time. We'll stop by and ask me where you been, what's on your mind. You wonder why I'm not drinking, still painting this old town red. I tell him I'm serving Jesus now, and the old man is dead. The man you see before you may look a lot the same. And I may wear the same old clothes and still have the same old name. You're looking on the outside If you could see inside instead You'd see a brand new man Cause the old man is dead I used to live such a wicked life I had no hope inside I was lost in darkness, searching for the light. Then one night in a little church, after hearing what the preacher said, I put my faith in Jesus, now the old man is dead. man you see before you may look a lot the same, and I may wear the same old clothes, still got the same old name, you're looking on the outside, if you could see inside instead. You would see a brand new man, cause the old man is dead. You're looking on the outside, if you could see inside instead. You would see a brand new man, cause the old man is dead. Amen. Praise God. That's the truth, too. I used to be a wicked man. I used to do a lot of wicked things. My heart was full of wickedness. Jesus changed all that. You know what? I gave him control. I try, well, I take that. I still have to give him control every day I wake up. Amen. Because I. You know what? I'm still carrying this flesh around. And that old man may be dead, but every now and then that old man wakes up and he says, Hey, wait a minute. I'm running this show. What are you doing? And you gotta you gotta take heed or you'll you'll lose your place. Not lose your place in heaven, but you lose your place in the path of God's service. Amen. All right, we're gonna turn our Bible this morning and get started and uh get back in our study of uh getting to know Jesus. Amen. I can't thank anybody any better to get to know. Amen. We're going to look in Luke 6 this morning. We're going to read that passage, and we'll go read our passage in Matthew as we've been doing. Is the air on up here? I wish this air right here would blow. Can you fix that? Because I am I am hot right here. I appreciate it if you would. <laughs> if the other unit's on, switch it with this one. <laughs> Luke chapter 6, beginning with verse 12 through verse 18. Luke 6, verse 12 through verse 18, and then we'll go to Matthew chapter 5 after that. And uh, running just a few minutes behind today. I think that'll work. Pretty sure. And not felt it quite yet, but I think that's it. All right, Luke chapter 6, verse 12 through 18. The Bible said, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles, 
Simon, whom he named Peter, Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which was which also was the traitor. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him to be healed of their diseases and they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. Amen. <clears throat> there wasn't a worse case in that crowd that Jesus said, well... I can get all of you but that guy because he's too tough for me. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. Let's take something from this this morning. I know we've read this passage over and over and over and over. But let's be careful we don't ever fall into the trap of looking at somebody and saying they are past saving. There's no sense in me wasting my breath on them because God can't save somebody like that. We are, we are doing the devil's business when we start thinking like that. Folks, there ain't nobody in this world that's beyond saving. Amen. Now, you say, wait a minute. God gives some over to a reprobate mind. You know what I believe? I believe if that's that kind of person, God ain't going to lay it on your heart to try to witness to them. Amen. I believe God's going to let you know, hey, just move on. They've already rejected me. Listen, but if listen, there's people out there that we look at with human eyes, and we see them just like Jesus. Just like them. I'm sure, I'm sure when Judas come down that hill, Judas wasn't a spiritual man at all. I'm sure Judas thought this is a waste of time. These people are crazy. Amen. I'm sure he did. He probably didn't, he probably kept it to himself. There's lots of people. Did y'all know there's lots of people sitting in church this morning during an invitation. If somebody comes down to the altar and, and the preacher has to deal with them for 15 minutes and they have to sing 20 choruses of Just As I Am, they'll stand there and look at their watches and they'll say, you know what, this is crazy. Amen. Thought I'd throw that out there. Amen. Don't cost you no extra. I'm going to get to the message now. The Bible says them people were vexed with unclean spirits. They were full of devils. And they were healed. God heals them. He cast the devils out. Amen. Christ cast the devils out of them. They are not too far gone. Amen. The devils had to leave. God has power over the devils. Amen. He has power over all sickness, all manner of disease. And the Bible said the whole multitude sought to touch him. What a, what a, what a scary experience that would be for a, a normal human being. Amen. Like I've said before, I've been in a concert crowd and everybody won't get to the front. And that's a dangerous place to be when the crowd's crushing you. And that's what they were doing to him that day. They weren't crushing him. They were certainly coming in on him. The Bible said and he healed them all. And when he got them all healed, they were all, you know what? He never healed anybody he didn't save. Amen? Christ don't heal somebody that he doesn't save. He healed them all. The Bible said, and here they are all there. And in Matthew 5, beginning verse 2 through 12, the Bible said, and he opened his mouth and taught them. You know what? They wanted to learn from Jesus. That's why they were there. Now, now, they're, now they're saved. They said, okay, well, we're different than we used to be. They're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Teach us, Jesus. Teach us. He taught them, saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You were lost. You had no spirit. Now you're saved. The kingdom of heaven has moved into you. Amen. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. God's going God's gonna to comfort your griefs in your life. And not only that, at the end of this life, you'll get nothing but comfort. Amen. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who don't take matters into their own hand. They let God handle their business. They humble themselves, and they put themselves under God's plan and not their own. Amen. God's going to bless them for their reward and reward them for their efforts. The Bible says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Amen. They're willing to serve God. They're saved. They, they grieved over the way they once were. Amen. They humbled themselves under the mighty hand of God. And now they say, God, fill me with your righteousness, Lord. I hunger. My, 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 I ache for it. Amen. I, I can't live without your righteousness. I'm thirsty. I'm like a dry man that's been crawling across the desert sand. And I just need, Lord, you to, to just drown me in your love and your righteousness and your power. And he said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Amen. You get filled with the righteousness of God. You know, you, want to, you don't want to rule the world. You want to win the world. Amen. God's power doesn't make a man's head swell. Amen. It makes his head shrink. Amen. It makes him get little in God's sight. Amen. He says, Lord, I just want to, I just want to, I just want to be like you. And God says, well, then be merciful because that's what I am. 
Amen. God's a God of mercy. He created. God created mercy. Did y'all realize that? There was no such thing as mercy in the world before God created it. That's who he is. He created love. You know, you know I've always said this, Brother Wally, I don't, I don't believe lost people truly know how to love each other. They don't know how to love because lo- God is love. And if you don't have God, you can't truly love. You can, you can go through the animal instincts of caring, but you can't love. Amen? True love comes from the heart of a believer. Amen? Um, people probably argue with me on that, but that's my theory anyway. Amen? <clears throat> the Bible says, and then he says, blessed are the pure in heart. Amen? We talked about that last week. Amen? I want to be pure in heart. When I read that, I get convicted because I know I'm not pure in heart like I ought to be. Amen? There's nothing about me, about me that you're looking at, the me you see with your eyeballs, the, the me that you hear over the radio, uh, your Internet, whatever. There's, no, there's nothing about that me that's pure. It's the part of me that Jesus Christ created in me, the Holy Ghost brought to life when I got saved, when I trusted Christ's blood and not my righteousness. Amen? That, that me... It's pure in God's eyes. It's washed white as snow. It has the righteousness of Jesus Christ, my Savior and my Lord, laid, imputed, laid across me so that God sees Christ's works and Christ's righteousness and His holiness. He doesn't see me and mine because mine are worthless. Amen? But notice, notice these Beatitudes. They're steps on a ladder, like we said before. You come in this thing lost. You got to step on that rung first and get saved. Then you got. Then you're going to start grieving over your sin. And then you're going to have to get humble. Amen. Then you're going to have to get hungry for God's love and His righteousness, His mercy. And then, and then you're going to have to start being like Him, that mercy, and craving purity in heart, craving holiness. You see, ain't nobody gets. Again, like I said, I've heard preachers rear back and say, "Bless God, if you didn't, if you didn't get all of it when you got down at that altar, bless God, you didn't get what I got." I've heard them do that. Well, it makes for good preaching, but it ain't doctrinally sound. Amen? It makes people scared. It makes people that's already saved want to get out of the pew and run down there and try to get saved again because it's like, well, I didn't get it because I'm still struggling. And he's perfect up there. He's wrong. Amen? Hey, listen. I ain't a preacher. I heard Adrian Rogers this morning. I was going driving to town. I was listening to the radio, and I was listening to Adrian Rogers, and he said, you know what? There ain't a one of us, even me. Hey, listen, I have thoughts that I shouldn't have all the time and I fight with my flesh all the time. Listen, there ain't nobody. I don't care how great the preacher is who's got it all figured out. Ain't none of them do. We all walk in shoe leather, amen? We all walk in flesh. But we get down to verse verse 9 this morning, and it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And we'll just stop right there. We'll read the next one next week. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. All right, well, certainly we're talking about this same group of people. Certainly we're talking about this is just the next step. Amen? We, we, we've, we've, gotten, we've gotten to where we're trying to be merciful to other people around us, and we're trying not to be so harsh. We're, trying not, we're not trying to, to uh, judge them with our judgment. Amen? And you know what? When people say, don't judge me, listen, you shouldn't judge them with your judgment. You judge them with God's judgment. You judge them with the word of God. You don't ever have to apologize. Because God's standard is supreme, amen? Just because you line up with it don't make you a, a, a hypocrite, amen? We're to judge righteous judgment, amen? So <clears throat> we have to fight off the urge to judge people with our own judgment, amen? And God's judgment is tempered by his mercy, amen? God doesn't give us what we deserve. Amen? So God's judgment is tempered with mercy, amen? So you have to understand that. And and so God, we're, we're trying to be merciful like God, and, and, and we're craving his holiness. And God says, well, here's something you can be doing while you're doing all that. Go out and make a difference in, in the world around you. How do you do that? Well, I have to share the love of Christ with people. And, I, and, and in the process, God tells me to be a peacemaker. A peacemaker. Now, wait a minute. What is, let's, let's understand this before we go any further, because if we don't understand this, we're going to miss everything. So what are we talking about? Making peace where? Somebody might say, well, he's saying you've got to go out in the world and save everybody. That ain't what we're talking about here. You can't save nobody. We're not talking about peace between God and man. He's not saying go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said that somewhere else. This is not what he's saying. See, no man can make his own peace with God. You heard people say, well, I'm going to make my peace with God before I die. You won't do nothing. You cannot, you cannot get salvation from God. 
You can't just say, well, today I'm going to get up and go get some salvation. You can't do that. God has to offer it before you can receive it. Amen. Somebody says, well, he's a hyper-Calvinist. I ain't no hyper-Calvinist. Amen. I, I believe God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But I also do believe in a sovereign God who comes and he deals with hearts of men. He shows them they're lost. And if he don't ever show them they're lost, they'll never even see it. And if you tell them they're lost, they'll just tell you you're full of, you know what, hot air. So a man can't make his own peace with God. God has to deal with that. And there ain't no creature that can make a man peace with God. Uh, there ain't, an angel couldn't do it, amen? And by the way, the Bible says if, if any angel preach any other gospel other than that you receive, let him be accursed. And by the way, that's Paul saying he can rot and burn in hell preaching some other gospel. Amen? He said it twice, too, by the way. Hey, let's, there's been some angels supposedly give some other gospel. There's one named Moroni supposedly gave some gospel, uh, a different gospel to a man named Joseph Smith. That's straight out of hell, wicked as the devil, amen? And any other angel that supposedly appeared to anybody, Ellen White or anybody like that, I'm going to tell you right now, that's garbage. That ain't Bible. Amen? Angels can't help you get saved. No. Men can't do it. The only peacemaker there is is Christ. That's it. He is the only peacemaker. Amen? Romans 5, 8 through 10. Listen to me. Follow closely. Turn there in your Bible if you got it. The Bible says, but God commended, which means he, he demonstrated his love toward us. How did God show us he loved us? He showed us he loved us in that while we were yet sinners, dirty, filthy, rotten sinners, like them crowd that showed up at the bottom of that mountain that day. They were all wicked, filthy, the worst of the worst. There was nothing redeemable, no redeeming quality in them that, that could be found, and Christ loved them in his compassion toward them, in his mercy, God who created the word mercy, the, 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 the thing mercy. He created it. He poured it out there. Amen? And, and when Christ was dying upon Calvary, the, the pinnacle of his mercy was being expressed in that moment. God was loving mankind like mankind had ever been, never, ever been loved before, and yet man looked at it as something to mock. That's God. God's incredible. Amen? Jesus died for us there on the cross. And he says much more then, now being, being not justified by his blood. No, his blood makes me right stand before God, a righteous and a holy God. His blood justifies me. He said we shall be saved through wrath, from wrath through him. I'm not going through no tribulation period. I'm not going to have to worry about taking the mark of the beast. I'm not going to worry about all that stuff. God said I'm saved from wrath through him. I ain't never got to fear hell. Hey, he set me free from that. And he said, for if, now get this, when we were enemies, he said, oh, I've never been God's enemy. Yes, you were. You won't admit it. You may not understand it, but you were. Before you were saved, you were God's enemy. And you know what God would do with his enemies? God will put his enemies in hell. And if you hadn't got saved, you'd have died as one of God's enemies, and God would put you in hell. And those that are listening to me out there in radio land, if you die without Jesus, you will burn forever in hell. Amen. I hate that for you. Amen. I want you to be saved. But you know what? Only, only you can respond to God, amen? God's Word's telling you this morning that you need to be saved, but if you don't respond, can't nobody help you, amen? God's trying to tell you. Listen, the Bible said when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. That means peace was made between us and God. How did it happen? By the death of his own son. Jesus was the sacrifice. Jesus was the lamb. The cross was the altar. And the Lamb of God was sacrificed for me and you and everybody that ever drew a breath and ever will. And the Bible says much more of being reconciled. Amen. Peace has been made. I can go to God. I can walk into his throne room. I can come in and say, Father, I'm burdened down. I need your help. Father, help me. Father, help me. And God says, come on up here, son. I got, I got, I got help. I got everything you need. Grace to help in time of need. I got, I got mercy. I got grace for you, son. Why? Because I've made, we've, there's peace been made. Amen? But that's not the peace we're talking about this morning. I thank God for that peace. Amen? First Timothy, I'm going to finish up on that too, by the way. First Timothy 2, 1 through 5. Here's what it says. He said, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Amen? He said, for kings and for all that are in authority, and we ought to pray for all those that lead us, even if we don't like them. 
amen, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. God wants us to live a peaceable life. God doesn't want us to always be in somebody's face. God doesn't want us to always be bickering with somebody. God doesn't want us to always be debating with somebody. Amen. God wants us to God wants peace in our life. Peace between us and others. Peace. I'm going to tell you it's a hard sermon. You know why? Because there's people in my life that there's no peace between me and them. It's a hard sermon for me to preach. Because I know good and well God wants peace in, in, in people's lives. The Bible says that we may lead a quiet and a peaceful, not turmoil all the time, a quiet life peaceable life, in all godliness. If you live godly, you're not always in a turmoil, amen? If you live godly, you're not always mad about something. If you live godly, listen, you may not, you, listen there's righteous indignation. I'm not trying to say we're not righteously indignant. We don't get, we don't get angry when somebody uh, 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 disparages God's name and, and, uh, and runs, runs his name through the mud and tries to tear down the word of God. Yes, it causes a holy, righteous anger to build up in us, and we're right and justified to do so. Stand up for God and to preach the truth, amen? But God didn't, God didn't put us down here to do like some preachers that I know and mock people and rail on them and tear them down constantly. God didn't put us down here to do that. He, he put us down here to live peaceable. Amen? Peaceable lives. <clears throat> he said, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. He don't want anybody to go to hell. Don't let anybody tell you that God, God wants people to go to hell. He don't want God, people to go to hell. You say, well, God's angry with the righteous every day. He is. He wants them to get saved because they're his enemies. Hey, he wants them to get saved. That's why he's angry with them, though, because they're his enemies. And to come under the knowledge of the truth, he wants them to know it. For there is one God and one mediator. What does a mediator do? You've got two parties you can't get along in a courthouse. And they're fighting with each other, and they bring in a mediator to find common ground and get them to agree and, and, and exit peacefully. That's what a mediator does. He's the mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. So what are we talking about? Blessed are the peacemakers. Well, it can only be peace between man and man because we ain't talking about man and animal. All right? That ain't nothing else. Amen? There's man and man. And that's what God's talking about here. Listen, the Jews. The Jews very, speak very highly and often in recommending peacemaking. I mean, they, uh, they've been shalom, shalom, shalom. That's what they, the Jews like to say, shalom. That means peace. Amen? Even right now, there's, there's constant talk of peace talks in Israel. They want peace in the Middle East. You heard about it there all, all the time you've been alive. You were born after 1948. Amen? Peace in the Middle East. Peace in the Middle East. And, and, and even in, in Christ's earthly days when he was walking on this earth, Israel was occupied by Rome, and they had no peace then. And the Jews rejected Jesus because they were seeking a Messiah that would give them a peace to a physical era, Israel. He, they wanted Jesus 